Let's begin with a comment from Diana Bianca from Nairobi in Kenya, who writes, of course the government is supposed to cooperate with the ICC prosecutors to gather evidence and prepare the, their cases against the perpetrators. But if governments and by extension leaders of the African states are not willing to cooperate, it will definitely impede the process. Another comment comes from Matiku Bernard Machagi from Tanzania. He says, it is ridiculous for African leaders to plan to withdraw from the ICC prosecution for the simple reasons of being unfairly targeted. I also believe most African leaders are always doing evil while in power. Now they are trying to isolate themselves from the ICC so they can be on the safe side. Very harsh criticism from Matiku here. Um, I'd like to pose the question to you, Demi, and to our panelists. What Matiku is saying is that are the African leaders just whining too much by making that kind of threat, or is it actually a legitimate concern that needs to be dealt with? And I want to come with that question straight to you, Dr. Kimenyi. I mean, obviously, the ICC membership is a voluntary thing. Yes. Countries yeah. decide to sign on to the statute and abide by the requirements. Yeah. So why, what's going on now? I, I think international justice is important. And I think the expectation was that ICC would be a fair uh, process. It would adjudicate in a fair way. But there's uh, no question that the cases before the ICC right now need to be investigated. They need, so to, that's be inve fair. They need to be investigated. But again, we need to go case by case to see, first of all, as I said, if we are going to use the same standards, we should use them for every country. Mm -hmm. You cannot assume that a crime committed in Kenya is worse than the one committed in Afghanistan mm -hmm. or in Cambodia or in any other places. So we need that. But the other thing is that I think the ICC has um, demises, uh, is not really taking Africa that seriously. Because there is also the case, for example, in the Kenyan case again, mm -hmm. witnesses were coached. They were paid by ICC. They were bribed to lie. Now, is that fact? It's a fact. They have recanted evidence. They have said they were being paid. Uh, you know, they were but being that, coached. But was that only applicable to Mr. Francis Mataura? Well, but, uh, you know, others have withdrawn. Mm -hmm. You know, so why is this happening? Because there was a clear targeting of this particular case. If it's not true, I mean, we need to be told if these witnesses are lying. But they have moved away. They have recanted. They have told the stories of how they were coached how they were being paid, how now, they were promised... What's the belief that it wasn't pressure on maybe Kenyans to say... I, I don't think that would be... I think if it's not correct, they should be prosecuted, those mm -hmm. witnesses. But I think the evidence is... So the thing is, we want a fair process. Africans don't think ICC will be a fair process. And uh, if... Now, if it's not the ICC, what is it? That's where we need to strengthen our institutions. In the end, ICC will not solve African problems. Africans need to strengthen their judicial institutions they need to reform the judiciaries. They need to have independent courts. That's what will solve African problems. Nowhere, uh, Hague will never solve our problems. In fact, in the Kenyan case, it mm -hmm. creates more problems. So in my case, in my view, is that the reforms that have taken place in these countries is what we need. We need then, to, yeah. I still go back to the point about how the messages is a little mixed coming from Kenya. When you yeah. specifically heard how Mr. Ruto said, don't be vague, go to The Hague. It yes. was almost an endorsement of The Hague at the time, but yes. something happened but, and we're not sure. But Mr. Mochachoko, if you could weigh in on this and uh, let us know what the ICC's position is going forth on this matter. Well, going forward, all we're saying that the cases must go forward. Justice must be done. Victims in Kenya want to see justice done. The irony of the whole situation here is that uh, of all the people that are talking, the AU and everybody else, Vice President Ruto appeared at the court three weeks ago. He never said that he wanted the cases to go away. He clearly said to the judges that he wants to have his day in court. He wants to prove his innocence. President Kenyatta himself, he made a promise to the Kenyan people. He said to them that, his conscience is clear and that he wants to come to the ICC and clear his name. And that is all you are asking for. Justice, let justice go ahead. Let the cases start. But Mr. Mochachoto, you're also not uh, really addressing some of the concerns that uh, is being raised by our panelists here about the objectivity. Uh, irrespective of the fact that there's a legitimacy to these cases about the, how the ICC is going about proving them. Get, get, the objectivity... The ob of the court, objectivity of the court is not going to be determined in the media. It can only be determined in the court itself. It's going to be determined on the basis of the evidence. It is going to be determined on the basis of the judge's decision. It's not something that's going to be discussed in the media. 
So okay. if anybody is questioning, if anybody is questioning that justice is going to be done in Kenya for anyone else, then all you need to do now is come, come to the court. Even in your own village, if somebody is accusing you of something, you go to your chief, you appear before the chief, the chief adjudicates on the matter, and he makes a decision. That's how the law goes. And okay. that's what the ICC is about. Mr. So we're not going to we'll, political we'll, issues legal okay. issues now in the in, in the in, in, in the um, in the public sphere we are going to discuss and deal with the ICC cases in the court before the independent judges some of whom are Africans okay now well, mr. Jallo we will come back to you shortly but I want to go back to Mariama you have more feedback right? uh, yes actually I wanted to just address another topic uh, that was raised by one of our viewers which uh, he talked about uh, the fact that most African leaders are always doing evil while in power uh, and I just wanted to make sure that, you know, this is somebody, something that they say, but th that is not always true. And uh, there are some good leaders in Africa. It's not all of them uh, that are actually uh, doing evil while, um, uh, while in power. But I'm sure you can weigh on that. But let's move on uh, uh, to another posting from an STA fan, uh, Sabelo Hala Bombella from the Eastern Cape in South Africa. He commented... Who decides what a war crime is and who must be prosecuted? As long as the ICC turns a blind eye toward other inhumane behaviors perpetrated by the so-called superpowers, then the AU's actions are justified. And finally, Herbert Masaba from Kampala in Uganda expressed these feelings. I am a strong advocate of African solutions for African problems. Why should the ICC dance to the tunes of its founders? Was the, was the ICC founded to mostly deal with African criminals? What happened to the word independence, and he puts it in caps, aren't these signs of neocolonialism? Same thing here, Dimi, for our guest. Uh, some don't see the ICC's usefulness mm -hmm. when it comes to dealing with uh, African issues. Also wondering if the ICC is turning a blind eye on other leaders, you mentioned uh, basically Syria, who they believe uh, uh, should be prosecuted as well. It could be Syria, it could be any other mm -hmm. country. That's just uh, because you were talking about it, I'm mentioning that as well.